Hello, and welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. On this week's show, COVID-19 cases are spiking once again in New Jersey. We talk to one of the state's top experts on how long the pandemic will last. The new head of the New Jersey Restaurant and Hospitality Association shares some dire statistics on restaurant closings in the state. And a protest against Girl Scout cookies by Girl Scouts. But first, my interview with Dr. Ray Penateri, Vice Chancellor for Translational Medicine and Science at Rutgers University. Doctor, thank you again for your time. You were always gracious with your time and it's important because I don't know anybody that knows more on this topic. And so I wanted to get a feel from you on what we should be doing right now. We are suffering across New Jersey pandemic fatigue. We wanna get back and yet it seems like the numbers are high. And while the numbers are high, we're getting conflicting information. Can you cut through yeah. some of that? Yeah, so I think this is a very good question. Uh, we're all experiencing exhaustion. Uh, if you've ever run, run a, long, a, long, uh, a long run uh, or a marathon, it's the last two miles that can do you in. It's very similar with pandemic fatigue. We've been doing this for so long and we're so tired of being in our homes and being careful. We wanna get rid of it all. This is not the time. This would be the worst possible time to do it. We have seen post-holidays, a big surge, not only in hospitalizations, but death rates. And the only way we could mitigate this is by social distancing, wearing masks, washing hands, and getting vaccinated. And it's really important that we decrease the opportunity of the virus to infect us. Let's talk about the vaccine for a second, because there are large segments of the population, a lot of people still that don't trust the vaccine, don't want to take the vaccine. If we don't hit, I, I keep hearing different numbers, by the way, and so it's 70% or 85% or 90% for herd immunity. If we don't hit those numbers, will we de ever defeat this? Short answer is, is not likely because there will be enough hosts, enough people to get infected to propagate the virus. Our goal here is every time a virus looks for an individual to infect, if that person kills the virus, it can't infect. So the bottom line here is we need to get herd immunity. Herd immunity is a combination of wild type infection and vaccine. The two of those together will generate herd immunity. And we have to be in the, in the, in the range of 85% uh, to really establish herd immunity. You know, the, the vaccine uh, generation, uh, the vaccine discovery is the fastest it's ever been. There, there's never been a vaccine generated so quickly, proven efficacious and safe so quickly. That's a little concerning. What did they miss? What shortcuts were taken? None. The FDA, through its rigorous evaluation of efficacy and safety, didn't cut corners. Why did we get it done so fast, Larry? The reason we got it done so fast is the world's effort was focused on one goal, almost for the first time, the goal of stopping viral infection. When you put all of scientists and science behind one effort, it's astonishing what can be accomplished. There's a there's pressure on getting back into schools, mostly from parents and from some politicians. There's pressures to uh, reopen businesses. Is this the time for that? Boy, you know, there there's a risk benefit ratio in everything we do in life. And there's no doubt that face-to-face -face education is better than screen education. I think there's more reason for socializing. There's more reason for people to feel engaged in the process, more reason to be a community. But within that community, there is potential for risk. Now, I think the 25% or hybrid approach in schools have been shown now by the CDC to be effective, but it means that we have to stay at that level. If we ramp it up, all we are doing 
is becoming more hosts for a virus. Same thing with work, same thing with restaurants. You know, we've made strides and we're showing it works. Actually, for the first time in the, in the last week, we're seeing a decreased number of New Jersey hospitalizations for COVID-19. That is spectacular. Now the death rate lags behind hospitalizations. So the good news is that we stay on target, Larry, we're going to have a decrease in mortality. Uh, but there's there's a hope on the horizon, is there not? And some of it's coming from New Jersey. Uh, Johnson & Johnson will soon have theirs. You've been involved in this. So so tell us the vaccines yeah. that are coming and, and the help that's coming. A J&J vaccine is a one shot. And it's a background that is more traditional rather than mRNA backgrounds. Uh, it's more like the flu vaccine or the herpes vaccine uh, or shingles. So, so there's definitely a difference in the vaccine types. Now, J&J, &J, we were involved. We were the second highest global recruiter, global recruiter for the J&J &J vaccine trial. We recruited 841 New Jerseyans and New, York and New Yorkers. Uh, we're proud of that. And we saw that the vaccine appeared to have very little adverse effects. Now, we don't know the efficacy yet. That's going to come out probably later this week or early next week. Now, what if it looks good? Well, now we have a third pharma to deliver vaccines. I can assure you there were no shortcuts. Wonderful. Uh, doctor, uh, as always, thank you for your time. Dr. Ray Penateri, Vice Chancellor of Translational Medicine and Science at Rutgers University. Still to come on Jersey Matters, some startling statistics about the future of restaurants in New Jersey. That's next.